All right, guys, welcome back to our subscriber game here. Um, there's not a lot to report. This is going to be a quick check-in here. Um, I'm very happy with my expansion out to this um, island. It did uh, yield for me a double coal and then three single coals. So you can see already my energy situation is getting better. I am building a harbor on all three of these tiles. Um, you might say, why are you building on single tiles? Well, because a harbor doesn't have any daily upkeep. So once you build it, it's built and it gives you that plus 25% forever. And you know, hey, 25% of 1500 is like what, 400, 425. So it's not bad. That's, you know, per day. And then for, on all three of these, so, you know, it's going to give me an additional 425 for each of those three. So a total of around 1300 extra, which is not too bad. So I'll take it. And of course, over here, this is a 4,000 tile. So it's going to give me 25% addition to that. So, and by the way, um, as morale improves, that number will also improve. So I'm going after this double wood tile and this, uh, if nobody else takes it, I'll take this wheat tile and then I'm done. I'm sending that entire army, which is not huge, but it's not nothing either. 108 and seven, sending them to the Asian mainland with the rest of my troops, as you can see, streaming over. Okay, um, I did want to give props to Borneo and Java. You can see they're expanding uh, wonderfully up here in these islands. Pretty much everything in this region is blue now, meaning in the hands of my allies. That's what I love to see. Uh, it does look like Indonesia is putting up some resistance, but what are you going to do against cruisers, um, you know, on the sea, lobbing in? ordinance there's not much you can do so as uh as troops continue to land here it, it's a wonderful thing to see these 10 cruisers here from Geraldton, and we'll, i imagine we'll see more cruisers from other individuals in the future gascoin has a cruiser brigade here single cruiser um gascoin has another cruiser here so uh i'm not sure what what oh somebody's got some air already oh Look at that. Java's got a bomber. All right. I love it. Good for you, Java. And that means that Java's going to be developing oil fields. I always say oil. Airfields along here as well, which is handy for the rest of us as we build them to, to island hop on up to the front. So that's all that's going on right now. Um, you can see my allies are continuing to expand to these islands here, which is great. Um, you can see that Otago is continuing to expand upwards successfully, which is wonderful. And as soon as he's done over here, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, it looks like he is currently at war with Auckland up here. Auckland had a lot of stuff. Auckland has not been at war with anybody, um, but Auckland is facing those old sea cannons. And, of course, uh, Otago could bring this up, probably should bring this up to um, to start lobbing in over there. And, of course, I'm, I'm really loving to play Otago, keeping your cannons outside of the town keeping these guys inside their fort. It's just beautiful play, perfect play. Um, so as these guys come in, they die against the fort and they also get uh, shells lobbed down upon them. Same sort of situation over here. You've got people inside the fort here, inside of level two fort um, with that good defensive car and then just raining down hellfire from the ocean. So great job, Otago. And that brings me to the last thing I was gonna cover here, which is Southern California, for unknown reasons, just randomly attacked Otago here. Look at that. And stupidly attacked because this was a level four fort. Now, it looks like it's been bombed down to a level two or a partial level three here. But it doesn't matter. You know, that that's a car, by the way. Cars are not offensive. A car is just the same as a guy. And Otago can probably correct, but I think this guy came in with like 14 16 maybe and uh and otago had i think eight well i guess i can find out can i it does tell you yeah, he had eight you can see two uh two in the casualties there how many did this guy have yeah he had he had sorry my bad he had 22 he's already lost 15 i mean just don't attack into forts guys this guy is just teaching us a lesson so speaking of teaching a lesson um here's what i'd like to do guys so if you are one of my coalition mates there are seven of us and with Otago, that's eight. I would like for you to do this. You don't have to, but I would love if you would find 
South California. Let's come on over and find South California, which seems like it should be up here somewhere. I haven't really played much of uh, South California. Here we are. So find South California. And if you would do this for me, you don't have to. But if you do this, it'd be fun. Go and declare war on him. <laughs> South California. Here we are. Guess what, bud? We are at war. Dude, declare war. Yes. Yes, please. Now, here's the diabolical aspect of this. There it is, turning red. I don't know who this jerkwad is. I don't know why he feels like he needs to come out. You know, look how far away, how far away from him. He comes over and he just suicides <laughs> 22 troops against a level four fort, which is just dumb. And, uh, and by the way, Otago was reaching out to them whole, the whole time and say, dude, you're going to die. Don't declare war on me. You know, I don't want that minus five morale. Why are you doing this? And the guy just never responded and then attacked. And then now, of course, is dying. And that's what I told Otago. I was like, dude, they're going to die screaming against your fort. Uh, but yeah, I'd reach out to them to try to stop them from doing something stupid. So um, here's what I'd like you guys to do, if you want, is if you would please declare war on South California. Remember, you can also go back and... Uh, and offer peace at a later date. And I think he's going to go for it because here's the plan. There's eight of us. And each one of us, if we declare war on South California, each one of us is minus five on his morale throughout his entire nation. So that's going to be minus 40 morale. Can you imagine? So for all of his territories, that's, that's global. That's for everything he owns. Everything is going to get a minus 40. It's just going to be devastating, frankly. And look, he's one of those people, he has his capital all the way on one end. So these guys that are far, these territories up here that are relatively far away, remember, they're also going to have a penalty to their morale for being far away from the, uh, from the capital. So I don't know what that penalty will be, but probably like five or six or something. So he's going to have like minus, uh, minus 46 morale everywhere. And he might reconsider his little war with our friend Otago here. And uh, so my feeling is if we all declare war on South California, who's located right here, um, that's going to exert some serious morale pressure on him. And then uh, at some point later in the game, I can reach out to him and say, hey, if you want this to end, you can end it. Uh, you can offer us all peace and we'll go. We'll we'll give you peace. But you need to make peace with Otago as well. So um, it should be fun to be able to concentrate that kind of morale uh, warfare against somebody who attacked our brother. So um, if you would please do that, that'd be great. Now, if you feel like your morale is really hurting and you don't want that extra minus 5%, because remember, for, for us, it's just minus 5% each, right? But for him, it's going to be minus 40%. Um, but if you, if you feel like you're already at war with too many countries or you can't sustain that, um, this is not, I'm not demanding anything. I just think it'd be cool. Um, I'm going to do it, you know, for a while. <clears throat> and then eventually um, he'll probably relent and we can make peace with him again or, you know, whatever. But uh, anyway, I thought it'd be fun to do that again. Uh, I'd like to see this collective power of a united coalition just devastating someone with a huge morale hit. Um, I've, I've never seen that done in a game. Um, one of my games, another 500, somebody was saying that they were like, hey, if we all. Uh, if we all um, declare war, like all the players left in the game, he'll have like minus 200 morale. But I'm going to say that's not true. I've played in massive uh, red versus blue games where I, I was at war with like, I don't know, like 30 countries at the beginning of the game because you just automatically are, right? It's just red red versus blue, and then you just you know uh, do your best to, to unite and win. And so it does max out somewhere. I think it maxes out at like... Ooh, 50 minus 50 morale. Um, I'm, I'm honestly not sure what it maxes out at. If you, if you guys know, if you're aware of what that is, um, let me know. But uh, again, it couldn't hurt to just uh, slap his morale around a little bit. All right, that's about it. Honestly, um, there's not a whole lot more to report. Uh, you can see this blue and white wave as we're swarming up to Asia. Also, as soon as I take these last two territories, I have 100 guys and seven... Uh, artillery they're going to make their way up there as well and uh and so soon not real soon but within the next week we're going to have just a ton of guys up here we're really going to start swarming 
up north into uh, Asia here. Now, this isn't AI. You can tell because I, some people are like, that's, that's the computer overlord. That's the CPU of the computer overlord that's taken over. I don't think that's what that really is. Um, somebody else was saying that that represents like a council like that's a door to a council hall that the council is running this country or something. I don't know. Anyway, you do know, though, if, if you see whatever that crap is behind the soldier, then it is being run by an AI. So this guy, oh, Poppy, and he's probably going, oh, Poppy, he's scared because, hey, uh, if you're paying any attention whatsoever, bud, you will see a united coalition of seven uh, with an extra brother on the side of Otago coming your way. And uh, again, Otago is just getting his footing right now, but uh, once he takes the rest of this, he's about to take a double oil and a double coal up here. Maybe it's just a double oil. Yeah, he's already got the double coal. About to take this double oil, and when that happens, once he starts ramping up his production here, once he starts getting his factories up to level two and three and his harbors in place, he's going to start churning out the cruisers. Remember, if you have a level four factory, you can churn out a cruiser every day. Instead of, you know, level one factory, you'd get a cruiser every four days. It takes forever. Once you once you crank it up to level four, you're really just churning out the cruisers. I really, you know, in the past, like I say, Otago does tend to become a naval superpower. So I hope he goes that route. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of what he has to do because there's not a lot more to take. And if you want to take these little islands, it's easiest to do with a nice beefy navy to rein in. Uh, death upon those islands and then just send a couple guys in because of course it takes forever to get out of the boat and then if you want to you know i've done it before like i run i run 50 guys in and then it takes them forever to get on there and then take it and then i have to then i have to send them to the next island so it takes all 50 guys or you know i'll leave behind five so 45 guys take forever for them to get out of the get back in the boat and come over here and get out of the boat again and so I've learned that is absolutely not the way to do it. What you want to do is just simultaneously bomb into as many as you can with two or three cruisers each, and then just send little groups of five into each one of those, and then just leave them there. Heck, you know, five is almost certainly enough to keep them from rebelling. Um, I really don't think they'll rebel with five. If you want to be absolutely certain, I believe seven is the new. Somebody somebody uh, weighed in and said it's not eight anymore. It's It's seven. Uh, will maintain if you have that morale of 25. So, um, but I think five is safe enough. So you can, like, you can take over all these islands almost simultaneously if you've got a decent navy and if you fragment into little groups of five and have them all climb onto the islands at the same time. Uh, but anyway, there's cool stuff going on. I'm, I'm super happy with Borneo and Java expanding up and outward over here and really um, sort of um, being the, the sharp end of the spear up here as we move into Asia. Now, we have not yet gone to war with uh, with Siam here, I believe. Let me just make sure. Oh, he's at war with four countries. Uh, he is at war with Java. Okay, so that is good to know as well. Well, Java, we've got a lot of people coming your way, and I think you pulled the trigger at the right time. You've got plenty of stuff. You've got a freaking bomber. Um and you've got plenty on the ground here, 79. That's excellent. And my friend, not too far away, you've got a bunch of brohams coming your way. Esperance is sending just a crap ton of stuff. Um, I believe this is also of Geraldton. Geraldton sending his up, though, to mainland, uh, mainland Asia as he fights Indochina. But a lot of this stuff, I know all of my stuff is coming to here because I want to make a beachhead and just roll up this uh, this peninsula. So, all right, that's it, guys. I uh, did not want to spend a whole bunch of time. Um, remember, again, if you're down for a little shenanigans, um, go ahead and declare war on uh, South California. Don't declare war on the wrong California. There's another California up here somewhere. Uh, I don't know. I just saw it on the, on the list. Uh, but anyway, yeah, South Cal California is the one we want to do. So, uh, Let's do it, man. Let's have fun with this. All right, guys. Thanks for checking in. I'll see you all next time. Adios, amigos.